<laughs> good morning, hello everyone. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending where you're logging in from. Welcome to this final of the Reimagine the UN Together Challenge, the Dragon's Den. I took a pause there for it to sink in that we are in the final stage of what has been a hectic few weeks and months. We um, are excited to have you joining. I'm not sure where you're joining in from, but at this point, we'll encourage you to use your we encourage you to use your chat box to tell us where it is you're coming in from. I know we're all over the world right now, thanks to technology. So please feel free to put in which country you're coming in from. And if you think you're not too far away from me, I'm coming in from Renisi, Italy. You can tell me exactly what part of your house you're coming in from if you've been working from home. It could be the bedroom, it could be the kitchen. Please feel free. Fantastic. Oh, I see lots of people popping up. There's New York, Vienna. Antarctica. <laughs> I think they're playing with this <laughs> From Antarctica. What are you doing really? up at this hour? I see New York, Rome, Berlin. Fantastic. It's an exciting time, and we're glad to have you all here. Okay. Uh, good, good, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to you all, too. Um, Layla and I are your, are your host for today's Dragon's Den, uh, final of the Reimagine Innovation Challenge. Uh, and let, let me quickly... Um, Introduce my co-host there uh, formally, shall we say. Um, you just heard from Leila Manley Spain, who, who as you know, confusingly is based in Italy and is the vice president of the UN Field Press Union. Uh, Leila uh, has been very integrally involved in the in the planning implementation uh, within the alliance of networks and groups that, that came together to create this challenge. Thank you. And I would like to introduce Jonathan. Jonathan Wong is the chief of technology and innovation at the UN Economic and Social Commission for Asia and Pacific, and he is coming all the way from Bangkok. If you see him yawning, it's not because he's sleepy, it's because he's probably, no, it's not because he's hungry, it's probably because he's sleepy. It's eight p.m. Like, yeah. there, correct, Jonathan? <laughs> and <laughs> Jonathan was one of the esteemed members of the advisory group for this challenge, which made the review, analysis, and decisions on the short list of teams that we will have with us today. There's much to be done, and we don't have much time, so let's get straight into it. Is my co-host there? <laughs> oh, sorry. Gotcha. Sorry. Muted. Um, uh, just some context. I, I suppose to say we're living in interesting times is probably the understatement of the, of, of the century. The pandemic has touched every part of the, of, of the world, every corner of the world, changing the way we live, the way we work and the way we interact. But on, on a positive note, I suppose the pandemic has brought to the fore the importance of technology and innovation. Uh, and, and of course, with disruption comes innovation. And, and organizations around the world have embraced technology and innovation in new ways of working. And I think the scale of staff engagement on this reimagined challenge is really living proof and testament uh, that the UN family has also embraced these opportunities to innovate. That is correct. And that is exactly what uni unites us here today. Innovation. Looking at how we change and transform the way we do things, the way we interact, the way we continue to advance despite the constraints we're all facing. Innovation, of course, is not new to us in the UN. It has been a word, a concept that has often referred to strive and has required all of us to increasingly, even to, to perform increasingly, even in our performance appraisals. What is so exciting about the challenge and the other collection of activities that go with it is that it is a real concrete example of how our system is actually changing with innovation. It is being challenged by innovation. And with that innovation coming from within the very, our very own UN entrepreneurs. In fact, the Reimagine the UN Together initiative is in itself an example of innovation being born from a complex and challenging situation and strengthened through collaboration and partnership. Yes, this is a time of challenge, but it is also a time of opportunity. As we kick off here today, we are honored to share with you a special message from our one and only our truly our Secretary General and this initiative, on this initiative and the event today. So if you give me a moment to put on my Secretary General's voice as I read out the message that he sent to all of us. A message, I'll, I'll read the title because it's beautifully presented for us. A message on the opening of the Reimagine the UN Together Innovation Challenge, the Dragon's Den. It is a pleasure to meet all the colleagues taking part in the Reimagine the UN Together innovation challenge. The COVID-19 pandemic has been a difficult period for us all. It has been a catalyst for change, 
bringing about a willingness to embrace new ways of thinking and to transform our ways of working. The Reimagine Challenge demonstrates the importance of giving United Nations staff time and space to experiment and work on ideas they feel passionate about, unleashing creativity to deliver on our mandates for the people we serve. The individuals, teams, mentors, and organizers who have participated in this challenge embody the United Nations we aim to build. One that values the commitment of its people, that is open to trying new things, and that together reimagines how we can recover better and achieve the sustainable development goals. I, Antonio Guterres, not myself, thank everyone involved and look forward to seeing the collaboration continue and their innovative ideas come to life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Secretary General. And Leila, off the record, well, actually, everyone's here now. You'd make a great Secretary General, I think. But, but anyway. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs> I think no promotion was on the cards for doing this gig, but there we go. <laughs> anyway, um, now, now before, we get, uh, before we unleash our dragons, um, and we'd like to take a moment to set the scene for everybody. Uh, and I'm very pleased to welcome Liliana Urubura and Dan Daniela Wirtz. Uh, Liliana, Liliana is based in um, New York. And that Daniela in Geneva, uh, both are part of the new UN, um, the, sorry, the new work initiative, uh, which is one of the groups involved in the alliance behind the Reimagine Challenge and other activities. Uh, they are going to help um, to tell us the Reimagine story. So, so Liliana, over to you. Thank you so much, Jonathan and Leila. Indeed, you would make an excellent Secretary General. Um, innovation and new ways of working, staff engagement culture change, business transformation. We've been hearing a lot of these buzzwords. Some of you know me from New Work, which is a growing network of colleagues from different departments and entities across the Secretariat. But today I speak for the Alliance to reimagine the UN together. It is a system-wide partnership of dedicated change makers and innovators. Over the last months, I've been incredibly inspired to see how many colleagues have stepped up from across the globe, all over the world, to really help reimagine the UN. From the staff unions to system-wide bodies such as the CB and HLCM and many other entities. All of these partners inspire me every day. COVID has pushed us to forge a partnership that goes beyond our personal relationships or individual relationships. And the sobering reality of this crisis with cases surging worldwide is very apparent, but it has served as a catalyst, as the SG says, to drive the change many of us had hoped for and he himself envisioned. It was essentially an overnight digital transformation and culture change that we experienced collectively. So the Alliance came together to address this problem, COVID, how do we deal with it? How might we build back together? as a UN system, as a family, to shape our future together. We co-created the space to give our colleagues a voice to be a part of the solution, a part of the conversation, to reimagine the UN together. Apologies, my slides are not moving. There we go. Recognizing that not everyone has the time or the space to come up with solutions or to dedicate time to a team. We wanted to give colleagues a safe space to share thoughts and feelings about our collective transformation. We developed this third stream, the Reimagine the UN Together Dialogues, which kicked off this month with almost 500 people signing up to participate. But back to the challenge. Building on the momentum of the UN Innovation Toolkit that launched at the end of 2019, and the catalyst of COVID, the Pulse survey went out to the UN system in April, and the data collected helped to solidify the areas of interest that colleagues were feeling in, during this crisis um, in helping to come up with new solutions. Uh, this complemented data that was collected by others in different surveys. And based on this, in July, we launched the, the challenge itself with 85 teams submitting and what a journey it has been down to the five teams shortlisted by an independent advisory group, and one of them picked by you in an open vote. I am super excited to see the pitches today. 
uh, and see the feedback from our dragons. From the bottom of my heart, I would like to thank all of you, our dragons, our innovators, our advisory group, all of our collaborators, and most especially to my Alliance partners for this beautiful and wild ride. It's been an incredible year. We can make an impact together. I would also like to thank our offices and leaders for giving us the space and empowering us to fail forward. And now, Daniela, tell us about the Dragon's Den concept. Thanks so much, Liliana. It's really so exciting to be part of this amazing global interagency Dragon's Den event. And that's especially the case for me as a representative of New Work, because this is actually building on a local Dragon's Den event that we held over a year ago in Geneva as a collaboration among UN Geneva teams and also as part of the New Work program. From that, we learned that the Geneva Dragon Stand was really a great opportunity to demonstrate to everybody the value we all place on creativity and innovation. And it really created a lot of excitement among staff. I truly believe it contributed to an improved culture and one actually that values innovation and empowers staff. I also wanted to mention again, like my colleagues have, the catalyst impact COVID has had on all of this. We realized that it was crucial to give staff something positive to focus on during this difficult time when COVID was kind of demotivating everybody. So we really increased all the new work and other activities, and we tried to hit the message home that implementing change and empowering staff, it's all the more important during a crisis. Anyhow, a challenging time is also an opportunity to work on the change we really want to see in our workplace. I know today we're going to see some healthy and fierce competition, but this dragon stand is really not about winning. It's also about demonstrating the power really all of us have when we work together on change. And we believe that we as individuals can indeed change things and we shouldn't wait for someone else or for management to change it for us. And all of you that have submitted ideas and projects in this competition, you are winners already. Again, I'm so excited that we're all here today in a global system-wide effort to reimagine the UN together. So let's get the show started. Thank you very much, Daniela. I forgot to unmute my mic for a second. Thank you for reminding us that we are all winners. Everyone who is here today, everyone who's participated in the challenges so far. Um, I'd like to now... Um, Remind the audience very quickly that you can show your appreciation, you can add your comments in the chat box. Please feel free, if you want to jump off your seat, put an exclamation mark, whatever emotion it is you want to share, please put, put your comments in the chat box. So now we are some 12 weeks after the challenge has kicked off. 85 teams that submitted, one advisory group shortlistings and people's vote later. We have now reached the final where we have six finalists who will face our dragons. Some people have asked, why dragons? Who are the dragons? We're getting to that part now. <laughs> and I can see some of the dragons smiling in the background. Anyway, we will unleash our esteemed dragons and we'll introduce them one by one. As we introduce the dragons, we're going to ask them to give us one word to describe how they're feeling right now. And as the dragons provide their word, I also encourage you to provide your words in the chat box, all right? So starting with our first dragon, it is my pleasure to welcome the Deputy High Commissioner for Refugees and Vice Chair of the High Level Committee on Management, Ms. Kelly Clements. Kelly, what is your one word to describe how you're feeling at the moment? Thanks, Leila, and hi to everybody. Inspired is my word. Woohoo! Thank you very much, <laughs> Kelly. <laughs> Thanks. Thank you. And we'll move on. Um, to Mr. Guy Gibbs. Guy is the Head of Design and Innovation, Knowledge and Technolo Technology Directorate, Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office. Quite a mouthful, FCDO. Guy, what is one word to describe how you're feeling? Creative. Creative? Fantastic. Thank you very much, Guy. Moving on um, to Ms. Sylvia lopez Ekra, Resident Coordinator of the United Nations in Morocco. Sylvia, what's your word? Sylvia, is sorry, you forgot to unmute. Hello, Leila. everybody. Hello, Leila. <laughs> I have three words. Walking the talk. 
<laughs> All right, we're about to see something we want to talk today. Thank you very much, Sylvia. Thank, thank you, Sylvia. So, sorry, my, my camera's paused, frozen me in a rather pensive position. So you're gonna have to put it for that for now. But thankfully, my, my mouth is not open. Um, um, but, but let me let me now introduce Mr. Murad Youssef Magdi Waba. Assistant Secretary General, Assistant Administrator and Director of the Regional Bureau for Arab States, UNDP. Uh, Murad, one word from you, please. Too, too many names. Um, one word. <laughs> Reassured. Thank you very much. In good hands. Well done. <laughs> and actually, on too many words, uh, Murad, um, competing with you for the longest job title in the UN, um, let me now introduce Mr. Jens Wandel. Special Advisor to the Secretary General on Young Reform and the Secretary General's Designate on, uh, for COVID-19 Recover Better Fund. Jens, one word from you, please. Reform in action. Uh, that's three, but I'll let you get away with that. <laughs> <laughs> and, and last but by no means least, let me introduce Ms. Jayathma uh, Wikraman Ayaka. Uh, one word from you, please. I'm Secretary General's envoy on you. Thank you. Uh, my word would be excited. I'm so excited that I can feel flames coming out of my dragon head. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for having me. Uh, you're Fantastic. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Athma. What an amazing panel of dragons. I'm so excited for what lies ahead. Now, I bet everyone is excited as well to get started, so we're going to get straight into it. Um, uh, and, but before that, a quick recap of how things are going to work today. We have six teams who will pitch to our dragons. You've met them already. Each team has identified one representative within the team who will pitch for three minutes. And there'll be a short moment of questions, exchanges from the dragons. We'll hear three pitches and then we'll take a short, short break and then we'll hear the remaining three. Stand by, be excited and thrilled, invigorated. I see all the words coming in as we start with the first group. Great. Right. Oh, so, um, just very quickly, um, while, while the dragons, just on the run of show, while the dragons are deliberating um, later on after the pitches, we'll have a 15-minute intervention period where the dragons, um, as I mentioned, will be deliberating, and you'll have your chance to do the audience vote. We'll be using something called Menti, which something some of you may be familiar with. If not, we'll give you details when we get there. Uh, and we'll, we're also incredibly fortunate during the interval to have a, a very special guest joining us um, during the inter intermission period for a fireside chat. Uh, where we'll be joined by Google's Chief Innovation Evangelist, what a great job title, um, Frederick First. Um, so before we get started, um, let, let's get the party started and move on to the pitches uh, and over to you, Layla, to kick things off. Thank you very much, Jonathan. Thank you for everyone. Without much ado, let's get to the first team. I will. I am pleased to welcome Ms. Livia Muller of UN Women on behalf of Skills for Future. Livia. Slide, more please. This is Maxine. She is a political affairs officer with the Secretariat, and her dream is to become resident coordinator in Nairobi. But unfortunately, she has no idea how to land that position. And Maxine is not alone. Next slide, please. Um, in uh, the engagement survey in 2019, less than 50% of UN employees said that they're confident in their career opportunities. And in a study conducted by the Young UN in 2019, only 25% said they feel the organization supports their career development. To empower UN personnel to take charge of their career, we propose a solution that provides personalized career growth recommendations to UN employees so that they know where they can go and how they can get there. And supplies concrete and actionable insights on skills and learning and development needs to the UN. So it knows how to ready its diverse workforce for any challenge the future might bring. How would that look like for Maxine? Upon logging in, the platform would pull all of her data from HR information systems, learning management platforms, and what have you, and compare that data against the different job profiles within her organization. Then the platform come up with personalized suggestions for roles that she could aspire to, as well as the journey to get there. She could also connect with people currently occupying those roles to learn about their experience and build her network. For roles that she requires additional skills, 
the platform will recommend learning and show short-term projects so that she can become a qualified candidate in the future. And all of that without her first having to build out a complicated profile. How to move this forward? conversations with other different entities as well as leading solution providers, we were able to confirm that there is strong interest in our idea and momentum to be leveraged. We also saw that solutions like the one we just described are already being put to use successfully in the private sector and those could um, seamlessly integrate with the different systems we are currently using across the UN. We're thus very confident that we will be able to select the tool decide on a pilot context and design the career architecture for that environment in a six months period. After that, we will be able to quickly roll it out, refine and tweak the features where necessary and focus on developing implementation guidance for other entities to adopt the tool. So then within a year, we will have a tool tried and tested, ready to be rolled out system-wide. What do we need to make this happen from you concretely? First of all, we would love your buy-in so that we can sit at the table and make use of the existing momentum. Secondly, your insider knowledge, because you know a lot more than we know, and we would love to use you as a resource for key decisions. And finally, pilot funding. The first, the first set of licenses, and very importantly, get six months of coaching and guidance from a subject matter expert. What do we offer? We have plus years of experience in HR, management, and procurement consulting, and combine that with heartfelt passion to create an engaging career journey for every UN employee. We believe this makes us the right team to take this idea forward and hope we can count on your support for that. On behalf of Olga, Amin, and I, thank you, and we're looking forward to working with you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Livia. Well done. Well pitched. Now, um, I will turn over to the Dragons. I'm sure there are some questions coming through. So I will go first to... Hold on a second. Let me make sure I've got the right dragon here. Sylvia. There we go. Thank you very much. I'm going over to Sylvia. Thank you very much, Leila, and greeting again from uh, Rabat in Morocco. And I'm very happy to see so many colleagues in the, in the chat from all over the world. Well done to Livia and the team from Skills for Future. For Future. I think the idea is brilliant. I really like the, the fact that um, the tool or the solution that you're proposing is going to be offering personalized recommendations. And I think that's very important. And, the, and also the opportunity to connect with mentors from all over. But reading your pitch, I saw that you mentioned that the solution could spot job profiles with low diversity scores. And I, I'm sure um, we all around the, the, the table here are very, very committed to diversity. So could you please expand on that and how it could help us push the diversity agenda forward? Thank you. Absolutely. Um, I want to check if my colleague Olga was able to join the audio to respond, and otherwise I'll take the question. Olga, are you there? I think not, so let me respond. So, um, yes, diversity factors are really important, and we believe this tool is going to be putting us where we need to be. Because what we alluded to in our pitch not only does it provide personalized suggestions to you, but it also creates key insights for the UN as an institution. So the algorithm that is embedded in these tools um, can analyze dynamically the current career framework that you have within an entity. So take UNDP, it can analyze who is within a certain job family at which level. So it can analyze who's at a P3, who's at a P4, who's at a P5, and who was able to advance on this ladder, how? And then because it plugs into an HR information system, it also has gender, ethnicity, all of those kinds of information. And it can tell you, look, actually, while we have a lot of women in the project management track, for example, they never advance beyond the P4 level, for example. Everybody who came from a P4 to a P5 was male. So what do we do? Now, currently, 
we think about things, there might be then an idea, well, they lack leadership skills. But you can go into that platform and see, no, that's actually not the thing. Women do have leadership skills. But the one thing they're missing is actually an experience in a certain field office where they could work directly with an RC, for example, because that has qualified certain candidates in the past year over others. So you know exactly where you have certain gaps and what you can do to address that. And at the same time, if you are on the HR side, you can push certain job profiles to groups of people that you would like to see represented. Again, coming from you and women, I always use gender as an example. If you have a certain um, job family that has mostly women and you would like to increase the male participation, it might not be on the because they usually look into a traditional male um, role or whatever. So I can push a notification of a professional development opportunity in that field that would not have been in their, on their radar thank and then ensure... Thank you, Livia. <laughs> Livia, thank you. It looks like the Sylvia and Livia show. Hold on a second. <laughs> Let's bring you back. Thank you very much, Sylvia. That was a really good question. And thank you, Livia, for stepping up to the plate and answering on behalf of your team. We've got another dragon who has a question standing by. So I'll hand over to Jaifma. De- De- you have a question? Yes, thank you very much, Leila and Livia and the team. Really, congratulations. I think this is amazing. Uh, I particularly like the fact that you highlighted career guidance and mentorship because I've seen in many surveys that, for example, Young UN has done, this has come as a actually a dire need for young staff um, in the UN. So thank you very much for this work. I have one question. So in many times, in addition to academic qualifications and professional experience, what makes someone successful in their professional role is usually soft skills. And particularly now we are talking about future of work and skills for future. It's so important um, to have flexible, transferable skills because some roles might not even exist today that we will be preparing for. So how does Skills for Future uh, plan to map out those soft skill requirements in addition to qualifications that you can put on paper? That's one question. Checking if our other colleague Amin is there. Amin, are you there? Yes, I am. Does this work? Yes. (laughs) Hi. Good evening, everyone. Um, Thank you for the question. Indeed, that's a very, very good question. And Um, First of all, what we have now in the system is our core competencies, right? And this is like teamwork. These are the the skills that, um, these are the soft skills that would also be replicable, of course, in any of these platforms. So if you go into your profile, you can, of course, enter your soft skills, soft skills, and this will be matched to the soft skills of a position needed. Nevertheless, this um, platform takes it actually even a step further because it can allow to test your soft skills. There are gamified exercises um, that allow you to find out more about yourself. And through these, the platform is actually able to steer you even better into the direction that you might want. So I'm keeping this very brief and quick. Thank you very much. Um, And and thank you very much, team and dragons for all that. Let's move swiftly on to onto the second vi- uh, second pitch. Um, uh, uh, as the co-host of this event, I am, of course, completely impartial. Um, so for the second pitch, it's my pleasure to introduce my UN SCAP colleague, the wonderful, the amazing, Gabriella Speisman, representing the UN Vision team. Uh, Gabrielle, over to you for, for your three-minute pitch. Thank you. Thanks, Sal. <laughs> yeah, we can hear you good. Go. <laughs> Hello, Dragons. My name is Gabriella. And the team and I are here today to share our vision with you, a design tool and collaboration platform tailored to the needs of the UN to empower everyone to create impactful infographics and share visual content. Think of when we need to prepare a presentation and want to add the logos of UN agencies and SDG icons. Think of when we see infographics and they can tell a thousand words in one image and wish you could prepare something similar but we don't have an available in-house designer or budget to outsource one. And think of our bulky print reports getting lost in a digital world full of competing content and our message failing to reach the people we serve. Now, you envision 
a platform to allow everyone in the UN to communicate in a concise, engaging, and impactful way. UN Vision is a single stop for all UN visual content, official templates, logos, SDG icons, flags, photos, and more. A design tool to help everyone easily turn complex information into engaging infographics and reports. A collaboration platform for teams to work together, share their visuals, and get visibility for their work. We found a solution available in the market, and we will partner with them. It will allow anyone to create infographics and dashboards in just a few clicks. It's easy to use and can be customized to the needs of the UN. We can organize our visuals, pictures, and logos, collaborate across teams, share visual content in different ways, including through our websites and social media. Our solution includes training and technical support to build the staff confidence and capacity in data visualization. We have done extensive market research, and now a group of colleagues is testing the platform. User feedback has been great, and colleagues say it's easy to use, collaborate, and create infographics. We want to pilot in SCAP in collaboration with teams across the UN. Start small, learn, test, improve, and expand. We are committed and have full support from senior management in SCAP who is giving us trust and guidance to move forward. And we are a creative team of experts in communications, project management, data analytics, innovation from five different UN entities. We need your support to promote UN Vision and seed funding to pilot the solution. And we need your partnership to expand it and make it available to everyone who wants it across the UN. Infographics in a few clicks, branding, cross-team collaboration, and engage in communication. That's our vision, to build together a more agile and impactful UN, one infographics at a time with UN Vision. Thank you. Thank you very, very much, Gabriella, and beautifully on time. Um, let me now turn to, to a dragon for a question. And, and Kelly, let me turn to you, please. Thanks very hey. much. And thanks, uh, Gabriella, for that wonderful presentation, quite crisp and concise. So the dragons appreciate that. Um, so I do have a couple of questions for you because it's, a, it's a, a clear presentation, but how do you actually manage the requirements of the users and the organizations? Efficient sharing is a great thing, but it almost sounds a little bit like a free-for-all to us. Uh, and on the other hand, there's a risk of building a really heavy governance into a platform. And given the really extensive collaboration with your team and the five agencies that have been, been involved, I know that's not your intention. Can you tell us more? Hello, Margarita here. Uh, thank you very much for the question, Kelly. Um, if I understood you correctly, there are two points. How do we uh, manage, um, how do we meet all the UN requirements and uh, uh, governance aside, right? Uh, so uh, speaking about requirements, uh, we have a very strong uh, partnerships and very strong support uh, from our colleagues in communications um, uh, within um, our agency ESCAP and also across the UN. And um, also uh, we have been engaging with ISEEC and uh, UN Communications in New York and uh, got very positive feedback from them and uh, engagement in terms of providing us with expertise and support, which is very important for us. Uh, so through this collaboration network, we're gonna assure um, quality of the tool and uh, we're gonna assure that our platform will meet all the UN requirements. Um, in terms of the governance, uh, we were planning to keep it uh, quite simple and it's also very horizontal. It will be a network of uh, data and, uh, and infographics enthusiasts um, across the UN. Um, and uh, we are very much hoping for colleagues to get engaged with us and to collaborate with us. Uh, so um, initially, the initial stage will uh, um, imply um, cooperating with the library in ESCA, uh, which is our unit that is responsible for knowledge sharing and um, uh, knowledge management. Um, and um, after that, we will start piloting the tool uh, within small groups across the UN. We already have uh, some great members of our team uh, in uh, UN mission in Colombia, in um, UN agencies, in uh, regional commissions who are eager to start uh, small pilots with us. And I guess we will um, 
see as we go. Uh, so it's a lot to learn. It's a new project, but we have very strong hope that uh, because it addresses uh, problems of uh, all the colleagues across the UN. Thank you very much, Sylvia. I was just about to give you the one minute to go, Simon, but you finished just in time. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. Sorry, Margarita. Sorry, Margarita. Now we'll move on. Um, we've got a lot to do. But we're on the clock. So we'll move on to the third pitch. And the third pitch is coming to us from, hold on a second, <laughs> from Connector. I'd like to welcome Amira to, do, to present on behalf of Team Connector. Thanks, Leila. We are a connector, and we connect the people at the UN for purpose. The greatest asset of the UN is its people. This potential is scattered across silos. And finding available people with the right skills in the UN is like finding a needle in a haystack. Enter Connector, a global platform that links people, skills, and projects across the UN system. On Connector, staff can share and develop their skills and interests through job shadowing, or cross assignments, or set up projects or requests for support, and to connect to available expertise quickly and without cost. Sounds like a far-fetched dream? We are already prototyping our own solutions to provide proof of concept. In addition, the high-level committee and management also recognize the need for a cross-system skills-based platform, and we have a growing support from leadership. When COVID-19 hit at the beginning of the year, Connecta supported the UN's response by connecting overwhelmed teams to staff with skills that match their needs. We have connected 20 projects across 12 UN agencies to a pool of over 300 UN staff sharing more than 100 skill sets through the platform. Project managers quickly found help to pressing tasks, and even better, volunteers love to learn, to network, and to contribute to important tasks with their full skill set. Cost savings from that pilot was around 30,000 US dollars, not to mention time savings for HR, improved project delivery, and staff development. Just imagine this at scale. Our action plan to get there is in six months, we would like to connect 200 projects and 1,000 UN staff. In one year, We'd like to scale Connecta on all the corners of the UN system. So what are we waiting for? So far, Connecta has been built mostly on weekends and evenings. To take Connecta to the next level, we'd like to ask for your support. Number one, the UN system will need to dedicate a team to work on Connecta. Number two, we need at least five senior leaders to form a coalition to commit to implement Connecta at the systemoid level. And number three, a truly cross human home for Connecta for IT infrastructure and resources. In summary, investing in Connecta means cost and time savings for projects, tapping in-house skills leading to increased employee development, collaboration and satisfaction, and ultimately a UN that can truly deliver as one. Help us take Connecta and the UN to the next level. Help us unleash the collective potential of the UN and its people. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mira. That was very confidently done. I will hand over the floor. I believe there's a question coming in from one of our dragons. Dragons, any questions for Connector? Hi, uh, yes. So uh, I think this is a really exciting idea that these community collaboration platforms live and live or die through the level of engagement they get from across the organization, not just the usual suspects. So how do you propose to, to build this level of engagement and maintain it over its life when staff face so many competing pressures on their, on their time, both in work and outside of work? Thank you, Guy. Thank you, Guy, for the question. Um, much appreciated. So Connecta is part of the global group movement in the organization, actually, that we want to see um, 
So if we aim to change the way we work. We aim to change the way we think. We aim to ch change the way we engage. And so engagement is a key part of it. And so how we manage staff and how we see their pot potential is a baseline of it all. So full potential, we also have to be honest, may not be actually realized through the boundaries of the mandate at work. And so we're campaigning for the shift in mindset in the organizational culture and the management and a campaigning for much needed change in culture of learning in the organization so that we can actually meet the needs of the future of the work. And as G said earlier, unleash the creativity and the potential of the staff or the people we serve. And let's be honest, learning comes from various sources, right? It's hands-on, some of it is hands-off, but a hands-on engagement in concrete project actually guarantees the accelerated way to actually attain the skill that we need. So staff continue to be engaged because they get access to the opportunities that otherwise wouldn't have they, ha they wouldn't have had. And managers continue to be engaged because they get access to the skills they do not have within their own teams. And because we see the current supervisees as future managers, Connecta also helps them on a more holistic view um, uh, to gain access to the networks and collaboration, which is going to be the future of, of, of work and the way we actually will continue working. So Connecta is by default a holistic solution on the design level because we're thinking beyond silos, we're thinking to actually make solutions practically accessible to everybody. And now to your question on the engagement, engagement can be fostered in multiple ways. One of which would be actually nudged and prompted, and other part would be self-initiated. So what you could do prompting would be actually in the context of performance management, career development, and conversations, and in, 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 in the usual day-to-day -day management. And the self-initiation is a new way of, 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 of working as well, because engagement is going to be the new way of, of, of working for the future that is a self-starter mindset. So that's basically what we're campaigning for. But um, being aware of the of, of, of the... Leila, you're cutting me out. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> no, you're doing good. You already answered the question. Thank you very much. Oh, thank thank you. oh my goodness. It's amazing. This is time flies when you're having fun. We've already heard three pitches. Well done to the first three teams. We will now take a very, very short one minute break where we give everyone a chance to sit back. I've been sitting on the edge of my seat for, since we started. So I'm going to sit back for a minute, ask everyone else to take a breather whilst I go to one of our dragons and ask a very quick question. <laughs> to strike a pose, wherever you are, strike a pose. You just saw my pose. So, um, I've been striking I'm a pose for half an hour. <laughs> Pardon? I've been, I've been striking a pose for the last half an hour. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you have. Jonathan, I will move very quickly and ask a quick question of one of our dragons. Jens, how has the session been going so far? And what do you think is important for us in such challenges like these? I think we've been doing great. Uh, time management, of course, is lacking a little bit, but the rest <laughs> is, is fantastic. <laughs> Three things, really. Three things, really. Number one is, I mean, when two years ago the Secretary General started pushing for innovation as a methodology, this is what he meant. And, and because innovation is not something to talk about, that is something you do. And it is the pitching, it's the, it's the sharing, and it's the willingness also to subject one's own ideas to, to, to you can say, a greater audience. It's a big audience we're having today. And even though, you know, we can see in the chat and all that, but it's this kind that builds competency and confidence. Secondly, we need to do more of this because we come from a tradition of doing little for a long time and then we do big reform and then we do little afterwards. We need to shift to continuous improvements and adaptations and ideas, they sit where they sit. We need to listen to every corner of this organization. And finally, we need to shift away from hierarchical leadership and to functional leadership. And this is what we're seeing today. We're seeing people coming together, getting good ideas and subjecting their good ideas to peer review. Thank you very much for organizing. It's great to be here. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jens. And, and amen to all of that. Uh, you, I absolutely agree. Um, and thank you for mentioning the time as well. And again, I, I think there'll be, to, 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 to the final pictures, um, there'll be extra marks for, for, for conciseness and, uh, and such like. And my apologies to the Dragons as well. We'd love to go to you all so for, 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 for questions and, and feedback, but, but we will have to watch the time. Um, so, so let's go on to kind of the second bunch of pitches now. And, and for our fourth pitch, I'm pleased to welcome Amelia Cray from Eclag, Eclag to present Unicoins. So, so over to you, Amelia. Thank you. Thank you. And hello. We're a young Hi. UN team from across the UN agencies. We have 13 UN agencies in our team. Next slide, please. And we're excited to present to you 
Unicoins, hardwiring collaboration into the UN system. What are Unicoins? You might be wondering. Unicoins are digital coins representing staff hours spent on cross-UN collaboration. Unicoins can be exchanged between UN agencies. Have you ever been working on a project and realized that you don't have the skill that you need in your office? In the UN system, we often limit ourselves and make do because we don't have funding or enough time to go through HR processes. So let's say you need a comms expert to advise on your communication strategy, and you invite Ahmed from UNDP. Ahmed and his supervisor have already had a chat about how many hours he can share with other teams. Do you have a short call with Ahmed and get started that very same afternoon? Ahmed brings back a lot of good ideas by working with a different office, and it keeps him engaged. When the work is finished, you recognize and rate Ahmed's contribution. He gets a collaborator's badge for his hours worked. His supervisor gets an enabler's badge, and you transfer unicorns to their office, which they can then use to access other services. You see, it's a circular economy. Both UN agencies have exchanged value at no cost, and we've delivered as one UN. That's the simplicity and the magic of unicorns. Our team has already started prototyping. In this challenge alone, we've transferred 902 unicorns, issued 28 collaborator badges and six enabler badges with participating teams and their supervisors. And it's all transparently recorded on a blockchain and easily exchanged between UN entities. Next, we want to pilot unicorns. Taken to scale, we can see who is collaborating with whom and on which topics. Data, which can be disaggregated by SDG, will give us insights into collaboration hotspots and help us identify thematic areas for future planning. So what do we need from you? Our ask is simple. Your support to find a minimum of three entities with 15 staff members to pilot Unicorns. Unicorns team already has the necessary skills to move this idea forward. We would appreciate technical support to integrate Unicorns with Atrium, a UN blockchain platform as well as a skills platform. In the post-pilot stage, we need your support in using Unicorns as incentive in the performance evaluation system and writing an HR policy provision. As budgets get ever tighter, we can't afford not to tap into our own collective talent and expertise. In our decade for action, cross UN collaboration is essential in delivering the SDGs to our world. Unicorns can make this possible. I know, that sounds big. It could even be a game changer. We can believe in unicorns. Thank you very much, Amelia. Perfectly on time. And I, I must say, beautifully presented. That was a, 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 a piece of artwork you just presented there. <laughs> but but let, let me let me now turn to one of our dragons. Uh, let, let me turn to Mor, um, Morad first for, for a question. Thanks, Amelia. This is really well presented, and I love the branding. Well done. My question what do you actually do with unicorns other than exchange them? Do they have a value other than the moral uh, value? Is there an exchange uh, market for them? How do you promote this and really get people to want to have unicorn? Thanks. Thank you, Dragon, for the question. Uh, Mark, my colleague, will take this question. Mark, over to you. Thank you very much, Morad, for that question. Um, we don't envision unicorns at the moment having an intrinsic value. They are a utility token based on a time-based currency. So they are a time banking system that allows for one hour of time to be exchanged. However, that does not preclude it in the future for having a monetary value that could be reconciled for uh, between agencies. However, as a time-based currency, we see incredible value in facilitating the cross-system collaboration that is the underpinning rationale of what the coin exchange uh, and sort of ecosystems would create. So we would like to pilot at least at the initial phase based on a time-based currency. And then of course, in future iterations, consider future possible ways we can be using utility tokens and other cryptocurrency methods for goals in the United Nations system. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mark. Thank you for, for that response. 
Uh, Dragon, Mr. Murad, I hope that was okay for you. We can move on. That's great. Thank you. Fantastic. Great pitch to Unicoins and thank you also to Media. Now we'll move on to our fifth pitch, our fifth team. I'm kind of feeling sad already because we've gone past the hamper and we're coming down to the, almost the last team. I'd like to introduce pitch number five. All right, here we go. Mobility Marketplace and the presentation will be done by Mr. Nicholas Smith of AIEA. Nicholas. Thank you. And today we'll all be presenting to you the Mobility Marketplace. Next slide. Mobility Marketplace is a one-stop platform where UN employees will be able to take charge of their career mobility. They'll do this by creating career and mobility profiles, signing up for point-to-point -point, point -point job swaps with other colleagues, as well as taking part in organizational-level mobility programs. Next slide. There is an issue in the UN right now is that UN employees don't have a simple and easy way to find mobility opportunities. UN organizations don't have any data on what the mobility preferences are for their staff, and this lack of mobility is hurting our colleagues' career progressions. We'd like to fix this. Next slide. To do that, we'd like to do the mobility marketplace, where staff can issue their mobility preferences, as well as create career profiles that showcase their skills, competencies, and interests. Once in the system, they will be able to find other colleagues for direct peer-to-peer -peer job swaps. Next slide. Once that data is also in the system, organizations can then use it to design effective mobility programs that take all UN employees under their wing. It is also a central point to announce mobility opportunities both within and between agencies. Next slide. So why should employees sign up for the marketplace? Well, they take power back to shape their career and find mobility opportunities, especially those that may have been hidden from them in other organizations. They also get to network with other people at the same career level and same career pro pro progression as they are. Next slide. Organizations will then benefit from this centralized data, which allows them to now create the mobility programs they've wanted to make in the past, but never had the data to support. Hiring managers will be able to find the right people with the right skills for their projects, tasks, and templates. In, they will also be able to facilitate knowledge exchange and cultivate best practice. So what do we need? Our ask is we need users. We need users uh, to join the mobility marketplace and we are gonna reach out to the staff councils, HR councils and hiring managers. We need resources, specifically tech resources and a platform to build this on, including many of them that may be pitched today. We need financial support for any licensing or development costs for the marketplace to be uh, prototyped, as well as time for our staff members to work on this and make it a reality. Next slide. The UN does have a mobility problem. Mobility marketplace is the right solution. Let's get moving. Sorry, thank you very much, Nicholas. I'm sure we have a few questions from the Dragons. I will hand over to you, Jack, who has a question for you. Thank you very much, uh, Leila, and also to the Mobility Marketplace team. I think you really nailed the challenge here. Um, I've, I've read in many places that the UN is suffering from a career fatigue, and the problem is limited mobility is actually affecting the organization as, as it is a problem for the UN to retain talent. So thank you very much for identifying this core problem in, in our HR systems and trying to find a solution to that. My question is... Um, we are all UN staff, but we all also have our own, own unique personal challenges. So will the marketplace have features that can help address the unique challenges that staff face, like age, number of years of experience that is required for certain jobs and sexual orientation and gender identity, if you're talking about a different location or disability when it comes to accessibility, that could affect their opportunities for mobility? Uh, thanks. Th th thank you. Thank you very much. Um, let, let's move on to our, 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 our last but not least. Final Jonathan, pitch. Jonathan. Oh, sorry. Hold I, on. I messed up the scripts, haven't I? Okay, <laughs> sorry. It's okay. Listen, my, my first mistake, give me one. Layla, sorry. Carry on. 
Nick, you're, ahead, Nicholas, you're mute. I don't, I don't think I'm muted. Okay, there we go. Okay. Um, sorry, if, uh, if we still have a minute, I will go ahead and answer your question. Um, there is a many, many factors that go into being able to deliver on the promise of mobility. And we would like to be able to capture as many of those as we can in the profile, which is why we want to make a very detailed profile. Um, now, some of the things you brought up are maybe things we haven't considered, which is why we need the staff councils and the HR councils and hiring managers to definitely be involved with some of the, the, the logistics of planning that out and getting the right data in there. Because one of the things we've heard consistently is that we can't offer good mobility if we don't know where people are, what they want to do, and what their challenges are. So if we can get that data out of the of the people and into a system, we can then help them find the locations where they can be mobile. Great. Thank you very much, Nicholas. Um, and la last but not least now, let, let, let me turn to Max Morelli for, 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 the, for the final pitch from WFP to present the UN Digital ID. Uh, over to you, Max. Thank you, Jonathan. So, um, hi everyone. This is the UN Digital ID team. Uh, if we can move to the next slide, please. UN Digital ID is the only digital document every UN employee will ever need from onboarding through to retirement that will be unalterable, transparent, and universal. I'm here today to tell you a story about Alex. Next slide. Alex has been working for a UN agency for several years, and like many of us, is now moving to a different agency in a new country. On her first day on the new job, her manager, tells her that she has to go and visit 13 different units to activate her HR, IT, admin, and building pass access. Puzzled, she asks her boss, how am I supposed to do any work today then? Her boss chuckles and says, well, nobody really expects you to do any serious work during your first week. Feels familiar? Next slide, please. This is a story of broken systems, broken processes, and data that is fragmented and scattered across multiple organizations. I was Alex myself a few years ago. But haven't we all been Alex at some point? And think about the time we spent in those long processes that we all have to go through and know so well. But what if there was a better way of doing things? Next slide. Imagine a digital identity that will allow us to have a fast onboarding to reduce the admin overhead down from an average of five days to just four hours. A standard process to prove you're eligible for pension in only two minutes instead of the current two months using regular posts. Security clearances. What if you could save one minute in the login process by switching to a passwordless identification system that automatically knows who you are? Yes, I am saying that it's actually okay for you to forget your password. Let's do the math. There's approximately 3 million yearly requests, one minute saved each, that's 50,000 hours saved every year. And imagine all the other possible use cases. This is a game changer. Next slide. Now, what if I told you that this future is already here today? Today, the UN Pension Fund is running a pilot program with WFP to enroll retirees using blockchain. UN Digital ID wants to continue building on the same platform to enable as many as 40 additional use cases, onboarding, training, certifications, promotion, interagency transfer, retirement, you name it. The UN Digital ID is the solution that will power all these scenarios. Using blockchain, we can ensure that your data is safe, accurate, and that the right party is accountable for it. You will retain full control and ownership over your information at all times. Next slide. To reach this goal, we're asking for your trust and your partnership. Trust because we want you to understand, believe in, and advocate for this solution together with us. Partnership because we want to build this together with you from the ground up. Next slide. We have a solid team working on this nonstop as we speak with strong technical, operational, and strategic experience from across the globe and across different organizations including UNHCR, WFP, UNICC, and the UN Digital Solutions Center. And you could be the next partner on this page. Next slide. So if you have been Alex at any point in time, you know an Alex, or you're going to become an Alex, join us in this digital journey to create a better UN for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Max. And, and again, beautiful presentation and, and perfectly on time as well. And um, let's now turn to our dragons and let me go to Jens for a question. Over to you, Jens. Thank you, Max. Uh, presentation is extremely clear, so let me go actually quite technical on you. That is that th this idea can <clears throat> be implemented. However, there's a 
big body of, of, of people like myself who started out in the organization with, for example, an index number or a unique identifier in the payroll, et cetera. What have your thoughts been on trying to, in a sense, uh, convert some of existing staff and the in existing index systems into this unique uh, identifier across the UN system? Thank you very much for the question, Jens. Uh, I will help Max to answer on this one. Um, so um, data from uh, uh, organizations and agencies will uh, flow naturally in uh, uh, UN digital ID. Um, this is true for existing index numbers and payroll identifiers, uh, which uh, actually do not follow uh, or do not adhere to common nomenclature between agencies. Uh, so uh, UN Digital ID in this way will create um, a truly unique ID code for employees that work across the UN and will allow people to move um, from agency to agency uh, with data uh, that will still be continuous and seamlessly, uh, seamlessly integrated. Um, not to mention that it will also save um, a lot of uh, resources and time. Thank you, Margarita. If I can just add a, uh, my two cents on that. Um, for example, my own, my own situation. I moved uh, from WFP to the UN Secretariat in 2011. I had a, an index number in WFP and I had a new one in the Secretariat. So two different systems, two completely identical set of information, but two completely different index numbers. Um, and my data was gathered across the WFP system, the UN Secretariat system, INSPIRA, our own uh, system, the pension fund system, so imagine all this information flowing into just one common repository where everybody can pick and, and read my data in a seamless fashion. This is the goal of the UN Digital AD. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Max. Thank you very much, Margarita. You've been supportive to two of our teams. Thank you. <laughs> all right. Now we have finished hearing our pitches. Believe it or not, all six pitches have come through. In the comments, we've seen some amazing comments of support going out to all of the teams. So well done. I want to reiterate, you are all winners already. In my eyes, A, I would vote for each and every single person, each and every single team. Now, moving on, um, with, I'd like to also thank our dragons. I'm sure it hasn't been easy to listen on all of these various ideas. And then uh, to ask the follow-on question. There have been some very challenging questions, so thank you. We will now move on to where our dragons go to deliberate. Yes, this is the tough part. I will allow them as they start disappearing. Those of you who have the grid view, you will notice that our dragons are disappearing one by one. My co-host, Jonathan, will be moving on with them as well. And I will stay here with you because someone has to ensure that you are voting. So I'd like to believe all of you have one of these devices. Can you see it? You have one of these devices very close by. So I will give you instructions on how we can go about voting. All right? So, um, is it, up there? is it on the screen? Ah, there it goes. It's, uh, you should be seeing the, the instructions for how to vote using Menti. Please go onto your phones, internet browser, www.menti.com. Enter the code. Or you can simply scan the QR code and vote for your team. Remember, this is going to change our feature. This is innovation in the UN at its best. Whilst we're doing that... I am super excited for this phase of our session. I have the pleasure. Oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that you will also be asked, prompted to add a word, a thought, a reflection for how the session has been going, your thoughts, your feelings. Please do put that in there. We want to hear from everyone. We wanted to, have, to keep it an interactive session where your comments are coming in. So please put your votes, put in your words, and we'll see a word cloud at the end of the session. All right? You can put your comments, thumbs up if you're with me, if you're happy, if everything's going well, please put in your comments. Now, I am super excited for this next session. I think I mentioned before, I'm trying to contain my excitement as I have the pleasure of introducing to you, Mr. Frederick Fert. Frederick has just joined us online. For those of you who have a good view, you can see him smiling in one of the screens. Um, Frederick is the Chief Innovation Evangelist at Google and an adjunct professor at Stanford University. Uh, Frederick has led global innovation teams um, which catalyze creativity, thinking, and trains people on how to build better future through technology. 
It is my absolute pressure, pleasure, <laughs> no pressure. It is my absolute pleasure to welcome Frederick to this session. Frederick, hello. <laughs> Thank you so much, Leila. Uh, I'm truly honored and humbled that I'm able to join you here from the Santa Cruz mountain from my geodesic dome. Such passionate and talented innovators whose mission, mission is really to reimagine the UN together. So first, congratulations for engaging in that super exciting challenge. Questions we'd like to ask. I mean, I want to know what is a, a, a Google innovation and uh, evangelist have for breakfast, but we'll get to more serious questions right now. All right. So the first question is, can you please tell us what it means to be chief innovation evangelist at Google and what do you find to be the most thrilling part of your job? Yes, uh, I'm now basically in that most thrilling part of my job, you know, being able to, you know, join you here at uh, 6.30 a.m. Um, standard time and, you know, hopefully inspire you a little bit uh, around how to make all of those ideas you just shared a reality. And so my mission really is to develop the capacity to innovate in everyone. As an evangelist, and you mentioned that, I'm spreading the good news. And the good news is everyone is creative. Everyone hopes for a better tomorrow. And I help people imagine a desirable future and give them the mindsets to really start experimenting towards that future today. So, you know, every part of my job is, is thrilling and exciting because every day is different. Um, but, you know, definitely this is a highlight for me this morning to join you here um, from Santa Cruz Mountains for my geodesic dome. I am moving, moving on. Oops, sorry. I was on mute. Thank you very much. Um, thank you very much for that, Frederick. I was just saying that days like this, I am super excited about what I do and for opportunities like this. Now, moving on to your work. Um, you have recently helped to reimagine working at Google, and you've helped many people and organizations reimagine a better future. What is um, What learnings do you have on how to reimagine? Yes, exactly. Um, I'm just coming out of a, um, um, a couple of months of reimagine working um, at Google. So what work means in the future for us. And this was truly inspiring. Uh, inspiring. And I'm, I think we, we have some exciting, you know, things to share hopefully pretty soon. But what I learned is that really it comes down to the question you ask, right? So questions that start with what if, right? that really help you imagine what's possible in the future. And so our teams really put out um, very inspiring future looking what if questions around the future of work. And so what I'm excited about is to give you also the ability to you know, ask those questions and just try to imagine what's possible in the future. And so maybe today, tomorrow, or in the next weeks, just try to frame some of those what if questions, right? Um, because they really help you to paint a clear picture of your vision of the future as well. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. I've just put in the chat, what if, let's see what some of the people come up, come up with. What if we get a thousand questions right now? <laughs> Moving on, whilst we get the questions coming in, I will, I will move on to another question we have here regarding our current situation. As you know, many of us are working from home. Do you think teams can still be innovative and effective? And in essence, what would you say are the ingredients for a highly innovative team? Yes, that's a, that's a great question, Leila. And I, I get this question a lot because, you know, we, we all want to work in those highly innovative teams that produce great results, that really experiment and try new things. So I think it's, it's really a, a great question you ask. Um, for me, um, it really comes down to one uh, ingredient, and that is psychological safety. We've done some uh, extensive research at Google over the past years where we looked at many teams, over 280 teams, and researched like, 
what is the difference between an innovative teams, those teams we all love to be part of, and teams that are not so innovative, right? Where we feel like, you know, it's not really coming along. Uh, it's not kind of like moving forward and so forth. And we found that it's really just one ingredient, and that is called psychological safety. That trust you feel in the team that enables you to do something different, that enables you to take a risk. And so... Um, again, my my kind of like encouragement um, might be here today that you, when you start engaging in your ideas, in your, you know, the pitches you just shared and start to make them a reality, try to really focus on the team as well. How can you enable trust in the team? How can you build that psychological safety? And it really comes down to some of the rituals you can introduce in your team meetings, right? When you start your team meetings, just ask like how everyone is doing how they're really doing, right? Ask them like, what did you learn this week, right? What have you tried? What have you, you know, learned in terms of like what didn't go that well? And just try to invest in that trust and psychologi psychological safety because that really helps you to um, build those very innovative teams. Thank you. Thank you very much, Frederick. I am so glad you spoke about psychological safety and trust. In the UN, trust, building trust is actually one of our managerial competencies. And um, sometimes I think we take it for granted. So hearing it from, coming from someone from Google telling us the importance of building trust and creating psychological uh, safety just sends the message home once again. So for all of our managers and innovators out there, please do not underestimate the importance of building trust and creating psychological safety to to breed the next generation of innovators. Thank you, thank you very much, Rebecca. Moving on to our next question, okay? Now, there is a concept you have of reframing. If you could kindly give us a little bit of your personal insight on how we can use it and how everyone can train themselves in the ability to reframe. Fantastic. Um, before we jump into that question, I just want to recognize the chat here as well. And, you know, the effort people are putting into their what if questions. <laughs> and so, you know, I just captured one what if question um, um, that was shared here in the chat. What if the UN um, truly worked as a system, right? I think that's a, a beautiful what if questions. And so I just encourage you to, you know, keep asking those what if questions because, they really inspire me, right? Questions that, for example, start with, what if we, you know, can produce zero waste, right? That is a question that really helps us to probably live a more sustainable life. Um, what if we all work from anywhere, right, in the future? And what if we can actually work from anywhere, right? That is a truly inspiring question that, you know, we are trying to uh, ask ourselves here at Google as well to really enable everyone to work from anywhere. Um, uh, a question that is asked currently by our uh, self-driving car team called Waymo. Uh, what if we could build the world's most experienced driver, right? That is a truly inspiring question, I feel, right? Um, if you can put the technology in your cars that it actually allows you to, uh, to drive um, itself. So just keep asking those questions because, you know, I feel they're, they're truly inspiring. Um, you ask it a good question on reframing. And so, you know, when we look at our current environment, right, where we see lots of problems happening, right, we see problems related to uh, racial injustice, we see problems related to climate change, we see problems related to, for example, wildfires here in California, and we as a family just had to evacuate our home as well. We see, you know, um, problems related to um, uh, to the environment. We see problems related to education, right? We see all of those problems happening in the world. And so you can, um, you know, go about those problems with, um, you know, fear and being in, in anxious about those problems, right? Um, <clears throat> that usually allows you not to have creative ideas or not how to solve those problems. Because if you're operating in an in a, in a mode of fear, right? You really kind of like feel locked down, right? You don't feel kind of like innovative and creative. So reframing is actually a method that allows you to turn problems into possibilities, turning problems into future opportunities. This is something truly exciting to do because let me tell you another thing that is that our brain is actually wired in a way that we usually um, 
not think optimistically, right? We usually think very critically. We think, for example, when we hear all of those pitches today, we think about, you know, the mistakes, the flaws, what what might not work about this idea. And we share that, you know, with, with people. But we can rewire our brains to actually look more optimistically towards problems. And so I just want to do one exercise with you. And just if you want to bear uh, with me for, for just a minute, just going to invite you to just close your eyes for a minute. So just, you know, sit back and relax. Maybe pause for a moment with your what if questions and just close your eyes and listen to what I'm, what I'm saying. Three plus two equals five. Three plus four equals seven. Two plus two equals five. Five plus five equals 10. And now you can open your eyes again. And Leila, let me know what happened. Uh, I, I kind of feel guilty, but am I supposed to point out that two plus two is not five? <laughs> exactly. You're correct. It was a mistake. And uh-huh. that's what, you know, everyone tells me when I do this exercise with them, right? They always spot the mistake first. And this is how our brain works. We immediately go for the mistake, right? We don't recognize that there were actually three equations correct, which is 75% of those, you know, four equations were actually, you know, correct. And we could start like, oh, great. You know, you had four, uh, three out of four, correct. That's great. We immediately spot the mistake and it just bothers us, right? So when we listen to new ideas and, you know, new innovations and new products and new services, we immediately go to like, what could go wrong? What is actually kind of like the mistake here, right? And that is a negativity bias that is wired in our brains based on our evolution because we have to think critically to actually survive. But I believe we have to think more optimistically to move forward and overcome that negativity bias to really see the opportunities in all of those ideas you should, you share today as well. And so reframing basically helps you to do that. And so another exercise I want to share is if you want to take a, a piece of paper, if you have that available, and just fold that piece of paper half so that you have two equal sides. And now you can actually list all of your problems on the left side of your paper, right? Problems like, for example, our children are not able to go to school. The schools are closed for our children, right? That might be a problem. Another problem might be climate change is real and impacts our daily lives. Another problem you could probably write down on that left-hand side of your paper is that I can physically meet with my team, and that bothers me, right? So you can go on and go on and go on and list all of those problems on your piece of paper. And let me tell you, we as human beings are really good in listing those problems, right? But what we also can do is we can shift to the right side of the piece of paper and turn those problems into possibilities and opportunities. So, for example, if you take that one problem around the schools are closed for our children and turn that into an opportunity, you can do that by starting a question with how might we, turning that problem into a question that starts with how might we. For example, how might we bring our children safely back to school? Or how might we enable students to learn from anywhere? How might we create better digital learning environments together with teachers and parents and even grandparents? Or how might we make education accessible to all people? Now you have four questions that allow you to actually come up with creative ideas on how to solve this problem. So that is the beauty of reframing. You take the problems and turn them into questions, starting with how might we, and that allows you that your brain actually starts generating ideas and creative solutions on how to solve that problem. Another problem I just listed would be climate change is real and impacts our daily lives. Turning that into a possibility might look like that. How might we change our diet 
to live a more sustainable life. And that already kind of like gives you a couple of ideas and solutions and how you can actually address that problem. So reframing is a beautiful way of turning problems into possibilities with just a piece of paper, turning your problems from the left into opportunities on the right. Thank you, Frederick. Thank you so much. Um, I don't know for everybody out there, but for me, I'm kind of sitting here smiling and thinking, man, this man is trying to reprogram my brain in five minutes, <laughs> completely going against the way I've been programmed to think. Because quite often someone comes to you and asks for something, and the first thing you think of is, how can I say no? Whereas the, you don't really think of, how can I say yes? So thank you very much for that. Thank you for the whole concept going into reframing and asking how might we do something differently. Thank you, Frederick. Um, I will quickly ask my co-host, Jonathan, how are we doing for time? Do we move on or are dragons coming back in now? I, I think, well, well, well on the, the good news, I managed to freeze myself after, <laughs> after an hour or so. It was, it was a very painful experience, but, but now I, I'm, now, I'm now physically back. Let's That's see how long it lasts. I'm not going to touch wood. Um, I, I, I still think we're waiting for the dragons to come back in. Fantastic. Uh, I, I, I think there's blood on the on the virtual walls in there. Oh dear. Uh, <laughs> oh dear. Okay, so this gives me time to ask another question. Yes, please. Oh yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Yeah. Go Fantastic, ahead. Frederick. I hope you're still there. You're not done yet. <laughs> Fantastic. Where is he? I don't see Frederick. Is he there? Hello. Ah, Frederick, can you hear me? Yes. Uh, I'm going to say, don't switch off your camera because everybody's enjoying that background right now. That sunrise. We are all in that room with you right now. <laughs> Fantastic. And it's a real background. I just saw that. I question. know. It's amazing. It's amazing. I mean, everyone's thinking, ah, we need to move to Google now. This UN is not going to work for us. We're not going to get this kind of background. <laughs> I love it. All right. So the next question, Frederick. Okay. Um, as you can see, I'm very excited for this opportunity. Now, what do you think is the most important? I know we spoke about re, 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 reimagining, we spoke about reframing, we spoke about psychological safety. Tell me, what do you think is the most important mindset needed to innovate, especially now that we are in such unprecedented, unpredictable times and all of us are sort of going through some form of transition? Yeah, that's a great question. I think for me, the two important mindsets of the future actually are empathy and experimentation, right? Empathy really allows you to put yourself into someone else's shoes and try to understand how they're thinking and feeling, right? So imagine you're a leader on a team, right? Empathy really helps you to put yourself into your team member situations, understanding like, you know, maybe do they feel lonely, right, at home? Maybe are they overworked, right? Maybe are they not able to disconnect, right? And kind of like going from meeting to meeting. Kind of like using that empathy to really understand people helps you to come up with better solutions, you know, as a leader of a team, for example. It's also helpful as a, as a teacher, putting yourself into kind of like the student's shoes, right? Understanding like how are students now doing with online education, but also as parents, right? like trying to empathize with your grandparents or like your parents or like your your children, right? Really helps you to understand um, how they're thinking and feeling to come up with better solutions. And experimentation for me really allows you to try things, right? And start learning. So I see still like comments on, about my geodesic dome here uh, in, in my backyard, which is something I actually built uh, with friends uh, pre-COVID. So it was before the pandemic actually started, you know, I wanted to build a space that allows friends to come together, maybe stay overnight, but also allows my children to, you know, have a, a room where they can, you know, they can draw and kind of like, you know, be creative. And for me, kind of like just a, a place to relax and kind of like, you know, connect with nature and myself. So this was an experiment and I learned a lot doing that experiment. So I just encourage everyone to, you know, maybe take a look at their own working environments and try to experiment, shift things around, right? Make it work for you and see what you can learn from those experiments moving forward. And also with the UN challenges, right? You're engaging now in, in those ideas. Try to, to put out a prototype or an experiment and see what you can learn quickly about those ideas. How do they work? What is not working? What do we need to change? So experimentation is for me one of those mindsets that really help you to make ideas um, a reality very quickly. 
Thank you very much, Frederick. Oh my goodness, it's been wonderful. I mean, there is a reason why you're called an inven- uh, uh, innovation evangelist. You just, you, everyone is thinking, how do I get one of those? How am I going to build one of those in my in my backyard next? <laughs> Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to have you join us for this session. You can see from the comments, everyone has enjoyed this uh, few minutes of inspiration. I wish we had more time to ask you more questions, but the dragons are coming back in now, so we will move over. I've seen some serious faces from the dragons. Oh my goodness. Jonathan, what happened? <laughs> so, so thank you, Leila. And, and, and Bye, thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you, thank you, you too. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. So so, so the, the, the dragons are back in the, back in the virtual room now. Um, uh, after some, what I hear uh, have been some intense deliberations, and I suppose now is the moment we've all been waiting for. Um, so, so, so first we'll hear from the decisions of the dragons, and then we'll hear from the audience vote. Um, so, so first the dragons' choices. So, let, I'm delighted to welcome Kelly, um, for, who will be representing all the dragons, to announce the decision of the dragons. Kelly, over to you. Thank you very much, Jonathan. And I want to say on behalf of my fellow dragons, thank you, thank you, thank you to the teams. We were super impressed. Your presentations, your energy, your collaboration, your vision in terms of how the UN needs to work in the future, all of that came through in spades. Um, this was a this was a tough one. Uh, six great proposals, uh, six teams who have obviously worked very hard in terms of how to put their best foot forward. Um, and we, uh, after a strong collaboration, uh, uh, we have come to the conclusion, we've got basically two, uh, two of the proposals that rise above the others. The first uh, is digital ID. And the second, yay, and the second is Connecta, but there's an asterisk on Connecta. So let me tell you what the asterisk is. We found a lot of similarities between uh, some of the proposals with the skills for the future and with the mobility market. Uh, And we also saw a lovely way to put unicorn, uh, unicorn into that mix as well. So we would invite in the next, the next phase of this uh, for Connecta to perhaps integrate some of the other elements from the other proposals. Um, and we also found the UN Vision proposal really super and a great way, I think, to, to go forward in terms of, uh, of um, bringing the UN together on a communications front. Uh, and so some of us can offer some support for that. But Jonathan, you're going to tell us what the audience thought, too, and maybe I can come back with a couple of words after that with some offers from our esteemed dragons. Sure. Let's do it that way. Okay. Thank you very much, Kelly. Um, so, 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 Leila, let's go over to you for the audience choice. I yes. you put your, your headpiece in there. Um, I have got, the, I've, got, I've, got, I've, got my, I've got my earpiece, they're whispering in my ears right now. No, let's let's not go into tallying votes, by the way. Let's not go into tallying votes. So, so hopefully this has been a, 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 a smooth process. There will, be no, there will be no recount. There will be no recount. <laughs> <laughs> I am excited. I want to clap. For the, I want to clap for the, the, the dragon's choice. Are we, uh, given the time, are we going to let them say no, um, say something from the winning teams or do we just move on to the audience choice? Because we haven't. Hello? I'm sorry. Hello? Um, maybe you announced the audience choice. Um, and Kelly's then got a few more comments from the dragons. Then maybe fantastic. we'll go to the, the, the three teams there. Fantastic, fantastic. I want to say thank you. Thank you very much, Kelly. That was, um, um, I I was thinking when you said there's an asterisk here, I thought to myself, man, we chose these dragons wisely. They are no joke. (laughs) These guys are so diplomatic, man. Everyone's a winner. (laughs) So for the audience choice, is it in this envelope right here? Or is it on my phone? (laughs) All right, give me a moment, drum roll, please, as I read out the winner of the audience choice. And the audience choice goes to Mobility Marketplace and the Fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations, guys. I'll hand over now to Kelly. Thank you, Kelly. <laughs> goodness. My goodness, this is exciting. 
<laughs> I would I say. I personally do. No, in all seriousness, if we could say that we were really super impressed and several of the members of, of the Dragons do have specific offers to make. I think it was mentioned in the opening, but a couple of those proposals have had a lot of attention uh, by the High Level Committee on Management and by the Task Force on the Future of Work. Um, and to, to just echo a couple of things that, that Jens said earlier, you know, it's, th this is about changing for innovation to be a way of being as opposed to a thing or a technology. And you could see in each of the proposals, this is where we're springing forward. We've got the opportunity to do this. So between, and I can say from, from, uh, from the vice chair of, of HLCM, we'll make those linkages for the team, uh, particularly that collaborative effort we mentioned, uh, uh, but also on digital ID, because it's very much firmly rooted in the future of work. Our UN Secretary General, uh, the Undersecretary for Reform, will make sure that we work this within the system as a whole particularly on the digital ID piece, but I think you can be sure that he will be talking about the other elements as well. We have advocacy and visibility from our special envoy on youth, um, who will be an active participant and has already offered to um, uh, have some of her, her team members actually work with the teams to develop the concepts future f further. Uh, and then we have, of course, uh, many of the, or the organizations um, who are represented here who either want to help to coach the teams or even offer seed money. So I think, um, uh, you know, again, a big shout out and a big um, congratulations, but we're not done yet. Uh, and we would love to help to support the efforts going forward. So big thanks. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Kelly, in the Dragons. That, that, that offers very kind of you. And I'm sure we'll be greatly appreciated by, by the teams. Um, I, I'm very mindful of the time, but, but I, 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 of course, have to go to to the teams, maybe for a very quick comment or reaction. So, so let me turn to digital ID first. Um, does anybody want to jump in for, for, a, for a quick word? Please all turn their cameras on. Please, yes. all of the teams. We want to see you. All the teams, all, 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 all the teams. I see you all. Please. But maybe, maybe, maybe digital ID for, for, for some quick reactions first. Well, we just just wanted to say thank you on behalf of the, the whole team. This has been great, and we're so humbled and honored to be uh, selected. Thank you so much. Uh, and this would have not been possible without the rest of the other teams. They were so inspiring to us. And uh, Joanna and Christophe at UNI Innovation, they, uh, they were so great. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Cheers, Max. And, and let, let's go to Connector now. Uh, anybody for a quick word? Uh, thank you. We are very happy and proud to be selected as the Dragon's Den choice. Uh, I would like to take this opportunity to extend an invitation to everyone listening here to collaborate with us and work as part of a new Thank you. Thank you. And, and, and Mobility Marketplace. Hi, this is Karen Esposito with Mobility Marketplace. I just like to say that we are so passionate about mobility and we are so grateful for all the people who have voted for the, the efforts that we have put in and we're grateful for the dragons and the advisors and the innovation team. Thank you all and please uh, sign up with us, get involved with us. Everybody who wants to be mobile should be able to move. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Layla, are, are you there? I forgot to unmute my mic. The second <laughs> of the day has gotten to me. My first mistake, right? <laughs> thank you. you so, thank you so much. Thank you um, to all of our dragons. Thank you to, thank you to our teams. Thank you to our participants, and thank you to our audience. Hold on a second. My computer is trying to turn off my virtual background. Oops! Is that happening to everyone else? No, I think you're cute. Okay, just I, have, I have frozen again. I've been told CPU, CPU usage is high. I'm sorry. It's it's. I think even the computer is getting overexcited right now. Look, uh, <laughs> let's let me carry on. Um, before before we wrap up, I just want to remind every. I just want to go back again and reflect on the message from our Secretary General. Um, he he said in the message I read out earlier, the COVID nineteen pandemic has been difficult, but it has also been a catalyst for change bringing about a willingness to embrace new ways of thinking and to transform our ways of working. The reimagined challenge demonstrates 
the importance of giving UN staff this time and space. That is the message, that's the words we had from our Secretary General earlier on. He emphasized that this kind of challenge embodies what we stand for, where we want to build um, an organization that has that values the commitment of its people and tries and that op is open to trying new things. Um, even our Google evangelist, uh, Frederick, mentioned that the importance of taking risks so that we can we can innovate, so we can work together and reimagine new things. So uh, reflecting on those words, I will now go over to our dragons to give us one more word about how they're feeling now before we wrap up the session. So I'll start first in alphabetical order. Guy, what are your what is your one word for this for this moment? Inspired. Inspired. Fantastic. Thank you. And Kelly? Enthusiastic. <laughs> Enthusiastic. Diathma. Even more excited than when we started. Thank you very much. And <laughs> can we all also please appreciate our two wonderful moderators who've been doing a great job. <laughs> and just, yeah. Thank, Thank you. <laughs> and Jens? Extremely pleased. Oh, fantastic. Murad? Very hopeful. Um, I think Daniela started uh, this uh, session by saying we can change things and not wait for management. And my God, you're showing it. Well done. Fantastic. Thank you. And as for no means the least, Sylvia. Mind blown. I think <laughs> the teams have really demonstrated what can happen when we leave our creative juices to flow freely. So please go for it. <laughs> thank you. Thank you very thank much, Sylvia. Thank you very much. Oh, sorry. Thank you, Dragons. Um, I, I was trying to compare what you started with with those words, but th those felt a lot more enthusiastic and, and inspirational. So thank you very much. Um, so so that, that brings us to the end, unfortunately. So, so, so to wrap up. We have... Um, we, we, did you see the word cloud, Jonathan? It just came up a minute ago. Yeah, I, I, saw, I saw the word cloud, but I'm also, I also saw the clock. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so to wrap up, I, I just really, again, want to... I actually want to say a special thank you to, to some people who, have, who we haven't said thank you today, yes, which is the yes. team actually working behind the scenes here, not yes, over just the past yes. few days, but over the course of the year. Uh, and just to say to, and there are actually too many names to go through at the moment, but just to say you've really created the space, the platform and support we need to innovate. And really on behalf of all the staff in the UN system, a big genuine and wholehearted thank you to you all. You've, you've, you've really been incredible. Um, that, that, so that just leads me to say, again, many thanks to you all again for joining today. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Uh, thanks to the Dragons, the teams, and, uh, and, 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 and all of you for joining us today again. And, and that leads me just to say, well, keep innovating. Uh, and, I, and I look forward to seeing you all soon. Thank you very much. And have a nice day, evening, etc. Take care now. Thank you, thank you, bye. bye. I'm sorry for freezing so many times. <laughs> bye bye. Huge thank you. Thank you, everyone. <laughs>